Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and this is Ruby Guides. In this video, I, I'm going to share with you a code kata. Code kata. So what's that? What's a code kata? Well, a code kata is a, basically a coding exercise program you have to write given a description. Um, very often, a good kata must have uh, some examples. Given this, you need to create or write the code to produce this output and uh, to implement this description. Okay, so it's a little exercise, just like people in sports uh, practice specific movements, right? Then when you are doing a coding kata or coding challenge, it just means the same thing. Coding challenge, coding kata, coding exercise. You are practice specific movements. You are practicing Ruby and you're learning different aspects and methods and things about how Ruby works. Another thing you're doing, you're also improving and working your problem solving skills, which is a very important to, very important skill to develop. Okay, so let's get into this. It says the description, given a number n, return an array with all its divisors. Okay, given a number n, return an array with all its divisors. And we get an example here. If n is 12, we should return this array because all of these number, all of these numbers can divide 12. Now, if for some reason you don't understand what a divisor is, that's not a problem with your programming ability. Because when some people do these kind of exercises, they get stuck and not understanding the problem. The most important thing when you're trying to solve something or to do something is to understand what you are doing, understand what the problem is, understand the different parts of the description. In this case, the, if you are new to Ruby, maybe you don't know what an array is. Well, you, you need to go through a beginner's tutorial before you're able to do these basic um, challenges. And there are more advanced challenges as well. This is a basic one. So if you don't know what a divisor is, this is a math concept, right? Well, you can go to Google or in, then you can search here. What is a divisor or what is a divisor in math? Or what's the defi definition of divi the divisor, right? What does it mean? Well, we can search and the one that really works for us here is this one. Okay, let me copy and paste that. It says divisors can also mean a number that divides an integer exactly. That's important part. A number that divides an integer, but not only that, but exactly, no remainder. Okay, so we're going to use that. So that's our definition of the divisor, right? Be this is going to be the core of our solution because we need to know how to know. We need to be able to know if a number is able to divide another following this definition. So we can do this um, before we create this array. We just want to try, how do we find if one number uh, divides another in Ruby? Well, we can try this. We can have the modulo operator. This is called the modulo operator. Um, basically, this gives, gives you the reminder. Right here, it says no reminder. So if it says no remainder, wouldn't it be useful to be able to get the remainder? So that's exactly what the model operator does. So we can get 
any number. So let's say we can get five. And if we look at the result of this, so we are here and we can see that the result of this operation, so this reads 12 modulo 5 is 2. What does this 2 mean? Well, 2 is the remainder of the division. So when we divide um, 12 um, in by 5, we get 2 left over. So the remainder is how many we have left over, right? If I try this with another number with like 4, we get 0. Why? Because there is no leftover when we are dividing 12 by 4. So that's what we're looking for. It says exactly. So divides and inter exactly. So that means there is no remainder. So no remainder means basically 0. So knowing this, now we can create a loop to check for this, right? Because we're going to check all of the numbers. So we're going to check for one. Is one divided by one leave any remainder? No. Uh, does remind uh, by two? No. By three? No. If I try, for example, nine. Yes, there is a reminder. So we're going to basically collect all of these numbers that don't leave a remainder. Okay, so I'm going to delete this now. I'm going to create a select. Why select? Because select allows you to choose, to choose which numbers you want to keep. So we're going to do a range starting from one up to 12. And then we can do select. And in here we have a block. And in here we can print the number just to see it. So you see we get 1 through 12. Okay. And this editor, because I know there is someone who is going to ask, this editor is called Atom. So we get th this, and um, okay, now we need to filter to choose how, well, we apply the module operator and the number is going to be, n. so it's going to be 12 modulo n. So n is going to be this number. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? And then we have more, one more step. The step is to check against zero because if it's equal to zero, it means there is no remainder. And that was our definition in here for what a divisor is. So that's it. That's our solution. We can check with other numbers. It's very important that when you get a working solution, you don't think, oh, I am done. No. You want to check with other numbers and see if it works with other numbers. Because it might, it happens, it can happen that it works with one number, but it doesn't work with other numbers. So you want to make sure that to test with different numbers so that doesn't become a problem. So I'm going to test with eight and uh, with eight, we will expect two and four, right? One, two, one, two, four, and eight to be the divisors. Let's see if that's true. And it is one, two, four, and eight. These are the correct divisors. So we can conclude that eight is working as well as 12. So we can test one more. And um, we can test, for example, um, let's try a prime number. What happens if we try with a prime number, like 11? Well, because it's a prime number, that's another math concept, which means that a number is only divisible by one 
and itself, by one and itself. So that means that in here, we, we should get an array with one and 11, because that's the, that's one and itself, the number itself, which in this case is 11, which I happen to know it's a prime number. So let's see if that works. And ta-da, it does work. So that's pretty good. So yeah, you want to do this process. Don't get, the, the, don't get, don't assume that just because it works for one input, we call um, this input what's com what is given to you. When I say given, that's what we call the input. It's given to you, it comes into your program. And when you return, we call this the output. So these are important uh, words to, to know. Input, what is given to you, output. What you give out as a result, the return value, right? So you want to test different inputs to uh, make sure that they work as expected. And then don't expect that if works for one, it will work for many. You want to test that. I hope uh, I, I made that clear enough because I've seen people make this mistake a lot, especially beginners, right? But you can't make this kind of mistake on any level. So there it is, that's our solution. Uh, sometimes you have to put this inside a method. So we can do that, um, find TV source. And this method is going to take an argument, which is our input, again, given a number, that means input. And in here, we're going to translate our code, and we're going to generalize it, which means we're going to take the part that doesn't change, that we're changing manually here, and this is called a hard code value, hard code value, want to generalize it using the parameter. And the way we do this, we replace the hard code value by our parameter um, name, and there it is. Uh, now we should be able to delete those. Um, we should be able to use our method and to find the resource for any number that we want. So let's try 100 and see what happens. So there we go, that, there goes all of the, our divisors. We don't really need this here. So that's all of our divisors, right? And again, we can try with a prime number. I think 21 is also a prime number. No, it's not. Um, half seven is a prime number. Hold on. Something is not quite right here. Because, ah, we have a, we have an error in our code when I did the translation. And the error is, let's find out. Hold on. One second. Our error is that we did and yes, as you can see that 11 we tested before, and uh, we can see that this output, this result is not correct, right? It should be one and 11. So to fix that, we look at the code and we see that we make a little mistake here. We are saying n modulo n. So n is going to be the input, but it's also going to be the current number, so that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. So we want to change this to something else, to i, for example. And now i is going to be the list of numbers, the range of numbers, and n is going to keep being the input, the whole, the number that we're working with, right? So this we fix the problem, as you will see right here. So there is fix. And we can try this again. Let's try seven. Yeah, it works. Let's try 21. Yeah, there's still not a prime number, but that's fine. Because why is it not a prime number? Well, because divisible by three 
and 7. 23 might be a prime number. Yes, it is, because it's only divisible. Yeah, there we go. And we can try 100 again. And they are the divisors for 100. So that's it. That's it for these coding challenges or coding kata. Uh, give this a try. Practice with those. But if you, if you can complete one, don't worry about it. You be, you can come back to it later or b before you, before you do that, do some research on Google. Look for terms, concepts in the question or the description that you're not familiar with. And then think, how do we, how can I do this step by step? What's one small thing I can do to uh, advance or make progress towards this output? So the whole key is he here is, how do I take this number and make this into this list? And one of the things you had to do for this particular um, challenge is to understand the concept of divisor and translate it into code, which we did here. So if you like this video, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it and so more people can find this video and benefit from it. If you want to learn more, watch more videos on the channel. I have many videos that you can learn um, Rails, you can learn about more Ruby methods and a lot of things that will be helpful for you if you are trying to become a professional Ruby developer. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell, enable your notifications so you can get more videos and don't miss out when I release new videos. And finally, uh, visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.